Welcome to the International Zone in the Ati Village. I'm here with uh, gold medal winner Michael McKinnon, a silver medal winner from the Discus, Neil McCarthy, and silver medal winner from the Discus as well, Ola Barry. Guys, uh, what an achievement for all of you to take medals home to Ireland. Orla, I'll start with you and talk to us about your win because, uh, like Michael here, you've done it before, so you knew what was required. Does that make it harder or easier? I suppose it makes it a bit easier when you have the experience because you know what to expect, but like you still have to bring it on the day and you have to have the adrenaline to get you going and like to go through the same process that you've gone through for other championships and you need to make it happen. Eve, what was it like for you? Because this is your first games and you haven't actually been at the discus for all that long. You're a relative newbie. Yeah, no, I mean it's it's uh, mental really I suppose that I've I mean I I I'm onto the silver medal. Was, I was coming in quite confident, uh, not, but uh, <laughs> you know, I, 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 you know, not when I came here, of course. So I'm just, I'm just so proud that you know the whole come out here and kind of done what I came here to do. I never believe court people when they say they're not confident, and I don't believe you now. Uh, Michael, obviously you took gold. You've had a week or so to soak it up. What's it been like since? Because people might have the uh, image of someone winning a medal, and wanting to get home straight away, but. Has that been the case with you? Have you actually wanted to stay here and soak it up and then eventually you will get home? Yeah, I think uh, one of my third games is everyone's experience as a part of the game. It's different. Uh, usually I would have two events, so I would be competing at the end of the game. But this time me and Jason have had the chance to really get involved with the, the other athletes and, and, and keep them calm, and perspective and try and tell them kind of a little bit the most important things of uh, how you perform at a high level whenever it's the first part of the games and we've also got to go and visit a few of the iconic uh the Redeemer and Sugarloaf and taking things in that again we wouldn't have experienced in other games and I think whenever you look back at, at these championships as well, the, the athletes and, and the athletics team specifically, um, potentially we can have 50% of our athletes winning uh, medals, it's just an absolutely outstanding and it's credit to not just uh, my teammates and myself, but also the coaching staff and the team as well, because they put a lot of hard work in and uh, I think behind the scenes there's been difficult times uh, for all athletes, but they have always supported us and we've been away with a good luck medal. Orla, you might give us a sense of what those difficult times are because for Orla, there have been changes in her event and the rules changed. So while you were coming in as a medalist, it wasn't the same as four years ago. You had to change up your style since because those are the rules that you had to be used to. Yeah, so there was a, a change in training and a, a huge change in technique. And you just have to overcome it and accept that this is the way it's going to be now. And what are we going to do to, to get back to the distance I had been drawing on the old rules? And we worked it out and I put in the work and I made up the distance that I lost and I, I'm back to where I want to be and some of the other athletes haven't got back to where they were. Uh, what about yourself? Um, you were talking about what maybe you might do in the future. You know that you'll work with Dave again. You know that maybe you'll stay in Dublin, but you've got some big decisions to make, don't you? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm kind of... Yeah, a lot, a lot to, to decide on. A strong chance I'll be back in Dublin because just the progress to be made there is just exactly what I need to start, you know, having a look at number one on the rankings now, yeah. so yeah, there's a lot of decisions we made, but in terms of work and all of that, I, uh, I you know, I kind of want to do a course in college as well, because I'm not going to be at this for the rest of my life, but it will eventually end, and it'd be nice to have some, you know, waiting for me when I am ready, but uh, I'm just, just going with it for now. Yeah. Michael, what's it going to be like getting back into the young? It's tough, obviously, you've done it twice before after Beijing, I love it. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's actually a tough one and I think uh, athletes don't realise the, the downfall or the come down from, from a major championship is it's quite tough and mentally tough and um, I think uh, over the next couple of months I'll be going away and, and sitting down with my team and um, not only looking at what I want to achieve in the future potentially at the World Championships next year but also what I'm going to do in, in the future life and like you said they uh, she wants to go back to college and, and do a course with us. It's never ending. It's like uh, I'm not going to run for the rest of my life, and um, I kind of want to have a job prospect in the future. And um, I think I'll go away and look at that as well. But I have to plan a wedding, and I have to <laughs> sort out a house as well. Yeah, yeah. So okay. um, with the new house, it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting one. So yeah. the, the mental uh, I, uh, well, aspect of training is going to go out, and it's going to be the mental aspect of uh, wedding planning. I don't envy Mike. Just before we go, you might all explain to us. 
to those of us who will never compete in the international levels, to do, those of us who watch sport but we don't really understand what it's like to compete in it and feel the highs and the lows. What's it like for that to actually have that moment of achieving your goal, to have that moment of this is what I work for, this is what I train to do, this is vindication of all of that or do you feel vindication? Tell us how it feels. Well it's like a huge adrenaline rush and like my competition they can run for like three hours or sometimes even longer so you're trying to keep yourself going, keep yourself focused the whole of time and then when it's over it's just a sense of relief and a feeling of I've done it, all my hard work has paid off and it's like you can finally take a breath. You know, it's like you've been holding your breath for the last couple of weeks, but now you can finally relax and know that you've done the job and you've done it well. Yeah. Yeah, you might explain the feeling. Yeah, I mean, very similar to Orla, but I suppose this is my first time properly experiencing yeah. it. It's just, the, the relief is definitely a big one. I mean, like, yeah, in my competition, I didn't, I knew kind of after, once it was a few throws left, that I, you know, had a medal, and then I knew I had the silver and I was just waiting for last row to be completed and then I just complete relief complete like I don't care what is happening at home anywhere else I am happy right now right here there is nothing I would change and I just it's just you know a relative at the moment. You well, are under pressure like you know and it's like finally the pressure is gone. Your own pressure or pressure from outside or what kind of pressure? Well I suppose you kind of create your own pressure I think but like sometimes being under pressure can make you more and better yeah. so you do almost create it yourself so that you will get the good performance out of yourself and you push yourself but then when it's over it's like oh the pressure is lifted like yeah michael explain it for us or explain it to us i should say um your race was a little bit different this time around because normally if you dominate this time you had to work incredibly hard and had to overcome injury and illness and i'm sure people at this stage know uh, michael's story that coming into the games he wasn't feeling particularly great, but you put all that behind you and you were able to deal with it and you won your gold medal. Yeah, as soon as you step on the start line or you throw your first uh, discus or anything like that, and you're there to compete, there's no excuses. Or if you have an injury or you have an illness, it, it doesn't exist whenever you step on that start line. And that for me was the most important thing to get everything negative out of my brain and, and to really focus on the competition. And, and even in the competition, the, the Canadian, the young Canadian, uh, brought it to me and pushed me to, to the limit and yes I may not have been uh, the most fittest or the well athlete that I, would, that I can be at the major championships but I made sure that I rounded the ball inside of me and, and pushed myself to the actual limit and uh, you see me coming across the line and falling to the ground and, and grasping for her and, and that's always the case and if you don't push yourself to the limit um, you never know what can happen and, and I had to really push it because the Canadian deserved to, to take it away from me and I'm not going to let that happen until I retire. Okay, Michael McKillop, Neve McCarthy and Orla Barry, thank you very much. That's it uh, from Rio for the moment from us. You might be a bit surprised that it's kind of dark and overcast here. It probably looks darker uh, the way we're filming. Quite frankly, we were too cheap to get a big light, uh, but it's, it's warm. That's the important thing and hopefully we'll get a bit of sunshine. Uh, before we go. Remember, you could get more on the Paralympics on newstalk.com forward slash sport and off the ball every weeknight from 7 and Saturday from 1 and Sunday from 12. For Rio, from Rio, for the moment, it's goodbye.